residents on A very good evening, you're watching NewsX and I'm Shivani Singh. A rare interstellar phenomenon is currently sweeping across the solar system. Discovered by the Atlas survey earlier this year, the 3i Atlas comet is making its journey across our solar system. Spotted in July this year by NASA's Atlas survey in Chile, it's the only third known object to come from beyond our solar system. Unlike regular comets born in our solar system, the 3i Atlas comes from another star system, its path cutting through space on a hyperbolic orbit, meaning it will never return. Astronomers say it's unusually rich in carbon dioxide and other ices, giving vital clues about how distant planetary systems might have formed. The comet reached its closest point to the Sun this week, roughly 200 million miles away, sparking a bright tail and increased activity that telescopes around the world are racing to study. Let's in fact take you through the details of everything that we know about the comet so far. And remember, this is only the third interstellar object that we have come to know of and hence it's very important to see how it, uh, what all details we can discover over here. So everything that we know about the 3i Atlas, it has been identified as a comet by NASA following detailed telescopic observations. So remember, uh, the NASA classified it as a comet after it observes its activities when it passes through our solar system. It has been labeled as 3i, meaning it's the third interstellar object ever detected entering our solar system. So you, we usually have naming systems on how it is named. And since this was the third interstellar object that we have discovered, it's named as 3i. And Atlas comes from the system that actually discovered this comet. Now, the interstellar object currently is traversing through the solar system. So you can see on your screens how it actually traverses through our solar system. And remember, this has come from another star system. That's why it is an interstellar object. Now, the speed and trajectory show that it's not gravitationally bound to the sun. Now remember viewers that uh, this is uh, on a hyperbolic trajectory and why it is so because the speed of it and how it's following the route also shows us that it is not bound to our star system and hence we came to know that it's come from another star system. There is no gravitational pull by the sun and it points to its origins in another star system. Hence, since it's not bound to our sun, it will obviously exit our solar system and it proves that it's come from another star system in the universe. Now, the speed of more than 200,000 kilometers per hour that is increasing as it approaches the sun. So clearly we are seeing high speed velocity over here and it's not on a constant uh, flow that's going. It's increasing as it's approaching the sun. And we just told you that this was the closest that it has appeared uh, around the sun this week. Now images also showed that the comet is becoming bluer than the sun and significantly brighter as it approaches the perihelion. So uh, this is also an amazing fact that has come to the fore. It's burning brighter than the sun. It's appearing to be more blue than our own sun. According to astronomers, the sudden brightening exceeds rate of typical comets by several magnitudes. So usually when we measure uh, the brightening of the comets and you know they, de they develop a tail, we measure it in magnitudes and it's showing that now when studies are seeing, we are seeing that the magnitude is many times than the normal comets that we actually observe. Now, since detection, several irregularities in the trajectory have been discovered and activity levels and also the composition has been noted. So clearly, uh, obviously, since this is the third interstellar object, we will race 
to in fact find out its composition and what it actually is. It will soon emerge from behind the sun and it is expected to be visible again by late November. So as we mentioned, it's racing past the sun and again it will again uh, you know be visible in November late this year. It emits a stable pulse sequence that appears to follow Fibonacci pattern found in the DNA in plants and in galaxy so that's another important point that we are uh, you know we have discovered that there is a you know stable pulse uh, frequency uh, sequence uh, at the frequency of 14020 megahertz so this stable pulse sequence actually resembles a lot to a, a lot of things in nature as well and the stable pulse sequence at frequency of 14020 megahertz also known as seti and the interstellar calling challenge. So clearly these are some very important points and facts that we have discovered about this third interstellar object. Joining me on the broadcast is Jayant Murthy. He is a professor retired of the Indian Institute of uh, Astrophysics. Thank you, sir, for joining us. Uh, a, a, very good, uh, a very good evening to you. Appreciate your time. First off, why is this comet so different and why are we racing to study it? Let me first uh, say that it is actually not so different. Uh, they're, they're, uh, as, they get, uh, as they study it more and more, they're finding things, uh, they're finding the water, they're finding carbon dioxide, stuff that is uh, characteristic of comets. Now, one of the problems is that it's so far away that it is hard to, to uh, study properly. And uh, one may not expect it to be exactly like the comets in our own solar system, just again, because it comes from so far away. So uh, I, I would say that there's nothing really unusual about it. It's important to learn more and more about it because it, uh, it comes from a completely different solar system. And uh, that's what we should hope to do and what we should do with the, with the other visitors that are bound to come. So we also have, uh, you know, we have detected unusual composition or, uh, you know, high levels of uh, CO2 and nickel, which also suggests that it's uh, older than our entire solar system. It's around 7 billion years old. And it shows that, uh, you know, there are significant changes in what we have studied uh, as the composition of comets uh, so far goes. Yeah, but that's, that wouldn't be surprising at all. Uh, I, I, again, I would say that, uh, that we really do need to get enough data to, to, to uh, see how it is different from local comets. Uh, I, I think uh, there, there's a lot of uh, uh, chatter out there, and perhaps some results are exaggerated, but, but I, I, I would say that, that you need to, you need to uh, get more data, you need to get more evidence. And uh, even if there are differences with our, with our own comets, which would not be surprising, it comes from a different solar system uh, and it is old, but 7 billion years, I don't know. I don't know how old it is, but it is old. It's been traveling through space for, uh, for a long time. So you wouldn't be surprised to find that, it, that the composition is different from, from our own local environment. So we are also learning since, you know, we have learned that it has a very erratic course that it's following. It has high speed velocity and we also know that this is not bound to our sun. Though, so this is the only time that we'll get to study such an object. So uh, NASA is saying that they will only be studying it remotely and uh, because it's impossible to actually match the speed and also, uh, you know, uh, see the course in which it is following. So how do you look at that? Because remote studies cannot yield so much results uh, for this oldest object uh, that is uh, currently visiting our solar system. No, certainly it is only the third interstellar object. So clearly we haven't had much of a chance to observe it. Uh, so you do what you can, you observe it remotely now because that's what you have available. It's, there's just no way that any spacecraft, you could build and launch a spacecraft to intercept this this object, the I Atlas, but uh, what 
we will be doing is now that the Nancy Roman, I'm sorry, now that the Vera Rubin telescope is online, uh, that will be detecting probably dozens of such objects every year. And so it would be worthwhile thinking of how to have a long-term program when not for three I atlas that that you just you it will exit the solar system and there's not, nothing we could do about it but for the dozens of uh, objects that will be coming through in the next few years it's worthwhile thinking of how we can build a spacecraft that's perhaps ready to go perhaps sitting in uh, orbit around around the earth sitting in orbit around the mars ready to try to catch one of these objects and that is something that should be looked at by, by uh, NASA, by ISRO, by ESA, uh, by the Chinese Space Agency, by whoever can do it as a, but perhaps a, that would make a good international collaboration to have a spacecraft ready for the next object that comes through. All right, Mr. Muthi, I'll ask you to please stay on with us. Uh, we have some more inputs that we'd like to share with our viewers. Now, the comet's unusual trajectory as well as the irregularities observed in its activity levels and composition have led to a number of theories and speculation about it. Let's take you through some of the theories being made by prominent personalities. First, we have Harvard astrophysicist Avi Loeb, who observed how the best image of the comet was taken when it came 30 million kilometers of Mars. This has led to the astrophysicist to claim that this contradicts NASA's assertion that an atypical jet evolved into a conventional tail. Loeb has claimed that NASA has not publicly released a photograph of the interstellar comet allegedly taken by the high-rise camera aboard the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. Loeb said he reached out directly to the principal investigator of uh, uh, high-rise requesting access to the data as a scientist but never received a response. Physicist Brian Cox was another one to come forward with a theory. His observation was that the comet formed seven and a half billion years ago, pointing it to being made before the sun and being formed out of clouds of dust. This has led him to claim that the three I atlas is a completely natural object made of carbon dioxide water, ice and cosmic dust. Astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, on the other hand, has observed that the comet's weird properties don't match the usual models that we have for comets and asteroids. However, Tyson has asserted that to take it as proof of extraterrestrial life is a huge leap. American theor uh, theoretical physicist Dr. Michio Kako, meanwhile, has observed that if the comet picks extra energy around the sun, it might indicate an intelligent visitor. Dr. Kaku elaborated that the comet's upcoming solar pass will allow researchers to observe a phenomena known as the Orbat effect, noting that in normal physics, energy going in equals energy coming out and so if the object gains extra energy by passing the sun it might signal that an intelligence is guiding it mr murthy we just pointed out some of uh, you know some various personalities who have their own theories to tell since it's a it's the third, like you have pointed out, third interstellar object. We don't know a lot about it and obviously speculations will be rife regarding its composition, its origin. But how do you look at it? Some of them have called it, uh, you know, an alien technology that might have just entered the, our solar system to study it. No, look, science is not a popularity contest, contest. And you can't just have people coming out, especially people with no expertise in the field. None of the people you cited actually work on comets or work on exoplanets or, or anything like that. They're just uh, people just spouting off. And you will get people doing that. You'll get people saying things. All we can do with this one is say that we don't know enough. Maybe it is an interstellar, uh, maybe, I mean, who knows? Maybe it is an interstellar spacecraft, but the chances of that, how, how can you say that? It's like you can you can say Comet Halley is an interstellar spacecraft. It's just you're, it, it's just talking without any evidence. Science rests on evidence. You have to have evidence. And so what we can do, there's not much more we can say about 3i Atlas, 
uh, if you're making extraordinary claims, you have to have extraordinary data, and you don't. You don't have the data to say anything real about it. So all we can say is that it, it's an interesting object. It, it, it's a fascinating object even because it comes from somewhere else. It doesn't come from within our solar system. We try to, we try to learn as much as we can about it. So far, everything suggests that everything is, uh, uh, says that is consistent with it being just a comet from another, from another solar system. That's all it is, another, a comet from another stellar system. Anyone can say it's whatever they want, but really we need the data. And that's why what we need to do is we need to prepare for the next ones that will come through. There will be many more. Let's, let, let, let's wait for them before making such, such wild speculations. I mean, speculations that are designed just to get attention. Let, let's not get into that. All right, Dr. Moti, I would like a quick comment on, uh, you know, Dr. Kako's observation because he stated a specific effect, the Obert effect, that, you know, if it increases the speed while passing by the sun, then it does signify that there is intelligent life present over there. Just a short comment on that and then your closing comments, please. I, I think, again, let, let's wait for the data. Let's wait for the data and let's wait for people who are actually qualified to talk about this, not just random television personalities. Let's have people who, who spend their time, who spend their life doing the science. Let's have them comment on this. Once you get a, a, a respectable paper in a respectable journal, then you can say, OK, let's, let's take this seriously. But this takes time. Science is not done. By, by, by press releases. It's not done by, by people just, just talking off the top of their heads. It's done by hard work and, and uh, spending time actually thinking about things, trying to figure out how things work. So let's wait for that. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Murthy, for introducing our viewers to the various perspectives of this oldest member of uh, you know, uh, an object that is actually visiting our solar system. We're shifting focus now.